Hey guys, it's me, Kimberly Clark, and welcome to this first impressions and demo of the Nubian 2 palette from Juvia's Place. Welcome to my demo. So I bought this palette in order to do the black-owned makeup brand challenge, but also because I watched Stephanie Nicole's video describing all three of Juvia's Place palettes, and they looked Stunning. I went online to buy them. Obviously, like I, I talked about the Black One Makeup Brand Challenge before. I think it's a phenomenal challenge. I love it. I have been kind of like waiting to use this palette until I could get more black owned makeup brand products in order to be able to do like my full face, do the complete challenge, you know? But I was like, you know, why wait? Let's just like do a makeup look with this palette and support a black owned makeup brand, even if I'm not doing the whole freaking official challenge situation anyway so i believe in that challenge and i believe in what it stands for more importantly so that's what i'm doing here today using this amazing palette by juvia's place which is a black owned makeup brand <gasps> gorgeous i was really interested in this palette particularly because the shades are like really beautiful they're very bright colorful jewel tones super like orangey warm situation and now i don't have any of those like morphe 35o or any of the really popular warm toned palettes so i was kind of excited to be able to get some like really great like warm toned matte shades like the shade morocco and madagascar but also have like these kind of amazing shimmer shades to like nairobi zuri and sheba Ugh, this palette is so beautiful. I really didn't know what to expect quality-wise. My favorite eyeshadow formula is Kat Von D, and I gotta say, comparatively, these are pretty good. They're not as blendable and kind of, like, easy to work with, in my opinion, as the Kat Von D's. I think Kat's formula is a little bit more pigmented and powdery, and so when you're blending them, there's kind of like a lot less work you have to do. These are a little bit more stiff, like a traditional shadow, and so they kind of like allow you to kind of like work, like, you know, you gotta like blend more to get them to be nice and soft. Today, I am wearing Zuri, Sheba, and Cleopatra on the lid in a kind of little ombre, and in the crease, I'm wearing Kenya and Morocco. Now, there is no matte black in this palette, so I had to use my Kat Von D Shade and Light Eye Contour Palette to use a matte black for my crease. But other than that, I used this entire palette for my whole eye look today, and I think it turned out really, really beautifully. I love that Zuri and Sheba, like I have Zuri on the inner corner and Sheba a little bit more on the center of my lid. And I love how this really looks like a natural kind of inner corner highlight. I love when there's like a crazy intense glow on the inner corner, but sometimes you want like something that's like a little more, you know, just like an, an actual highlight that can really kind of like transition into your next eyeshadow shade really beautifully without being super, you know, uh, like harsh and glowy. And Zuri is that exact shade. Let me give you some swatches for all of these shades. I'll do three at a time. I'll go top down. So this is Morocco, Jezebel, and Nairobi. Morocco, Jezebel, Nairobi. Morocco and Jezebel are mattes. Again, Morocco I used in my crease today. Next, we've got Madagascar, Zuri, and Layla. Now, Zuri is that shade that I have on my inner corner today. Okay, Madagascar, Zuri, and Layla. See, that Zuri shade is really just like a beautiful, beautiful highlight shade. I love it. Okay, and then I'm gonna take these off because I stupidly ran out of room. I'm just watching these on my arm. I don't have any primer or anything on them. I'm just doing a finger swatch. Rubbing it in the shadow and one swipe. I think generally these are all pretty well pigmented. Fabulous, love them. Okay, we've got Sheba, Cleopatra, and Kenya. Sheba and Cleopatra are more shimmery metallic shades. Kenya is a matte. Now, Sheba is really the most sparkly shade in the palette, I think. Zuri was kind of like a subtle highlight, 
And this one is a little bit more kind of sparkly. So that is Sheba, Cleopatra, and Kenya. So you can see Sheba is like has a little bit more shimmer than Zuri. And you could see it on my eye look, the center of the lid is a little bit more kind of like glittery, sparkly, and the inner corner is a little bit more just like high lit. You know what I mean? Okay, and then let's do the last three. This is Yah, Nefertiti, and Egypt. Yah, Nefertiti, and Egypt. I mean, ugh. They're just stunning. They're so stunning. The pigmentation is really gorgeous. The metallic and kind of like dimensional sparkly shadows are just really beautiful. They all feel super smooth, buttery. There is like a little bit of fallout when you're working with them in the pan, but I experienced none of it on my face, I'm happy to say. And I, I just am so excited that I have this palette and I'm just really excited to keep playing with these shades. Now, if you would like to to see how I came up with this eye look, please stay tuned and enjoy this demo, and I'll see you afterwards. Enjoy! So I have already completed my basic face, and I have topped my lids with my favorite white eyeshadow base, NYX Jumbo Pencil in the shade Milk. I'm using the Nubian 2 palette by Juvia's Place today, and on a flat shader brush, I'm starting with Sheba on the inner kind of third of my eye, but not all the way to the inner corner. I'm just packing this on, packing it. Pack it up, pack it in, pack it on my lid into this general shape. Then I am taking that beautiful highlighty shade Zuri on the other side of that same brush, and I'm just packing that on the inner corner, like right on in there, on the lash line, a little bit below, and then I am just blending it ever so slightly and naturally with Sheba, the color that is more towards the center of my lid. Ugh, this blends so beautifully on its own, but I'm going to go in a little bit further with my MAC 217 and just refine that blend a bit. Mmm, gold. Then taking Cleopatra, the beautiful metallic blue shade on the, you know, cheapest of cheap amazing eyeshadow brushes, my e.l.f. dollar brush, and I am just packing that on in this kind of like general C shape that I always do. I kind of do the kind of like butterfly wing eyelid situation. And as you can see, I'm going in with a lot more product and just packing it on and really getting that color payoff and then blending it out with uh, just a Morphe blending brush that is kind of stiff synthetic bristles. That's what one eye looks like, and that's both. Just trying to maintain this like slight wing shape. Then I'm taking that beautiful deep shade Kenya on my ever trusty Urban Decay electric palette brush creating my cut crease, and then blending it out with an e.l.f. crease brush and the shade Morocco, that beautiful orangey shade, and just really blending with my fingers really far back towards the end of the brush with a delicate hand. Then I'm going to line my cut crease with Kat Von D's Tattoo Liner. I obviously sucked at recording this, but it's supposed to look like this when you're done. Then I am topping it off with the precision end of that electric palette brush and the shade Shax from Kat Von D's Shade and Light Eye Contour Palette, just creating the bottom of that cut crease. Taking Rimmel's Exaggerate Waterproof Eye Liner, I am doing my brows. Now again, can't really film this, don't know how, but I make some, you know, big ol' Melania Trump brows. Then I'm just going to ombre them a little bit with some shades from the Juvia's Place palette like Jezebel and Zuri. And then I'm going to actually draw in little black hairs with my tattoo liner. Then of course do my little racer on the bottom with my full coverage foundation from MAC. Just create that little brow bone highlight. Again sucked at filming that. Just did my winged liner off camera and I'm now taking the slide on eye pencil by NYX in the shade Azure or Blue and creating an ombre on the lower lash line with the OCC Cosmetic Color Pencil in the shade Feathered. Then I'm topping off that ombre with matching colors from the Nubian 2 palette in the shades Zuri and Cleopatra on a pencil brush. 
and then I'm going to draw a new lower lash line below those shadows off camera. Then on a Kazette D230, I'm taking the shade Morocco and just smudging out the bottom of that black line. I love this brush for this purpose, for smoking out a lower lash line, but I do always like to use my e.l.f. crease brush as a final blender. I'm taking these crazy lashes from BH Cosmetics. They're like magical exploding butterfly pollen things. Gorge. And then some custom cut lower lashes that I made. For highlight, I'm using White Chocolate Frog from Shudo Cosmetics, it's an indie brand, very nerdy, very amazing. I'm taking this very delicately on the end of my Morphe M509 brush. I'm just dusting that on the actual high points of my face. Cupid's bow for no reason. Then I'm taking this blush by Black Radiance called that on a Cosetti brush. I love this blush brush and I love this blush too. I uh, learned that this blush, even though it is called Black Radiance, is not a black owned makeup brand. I purchased it in order to do the black owned makeup brand challenge, but alas, this brand is actually owned by Wet n Wild. It's an amazing brand and they cater to deeper skin tones, so I love them, but Anyway, I'm taking Almeria by NARS to Ombre and tone down this beautiful bright red blush a little bit. This was a limited edition blush. I love it. NARS Almeria. And then I'm just topping off my contour, just blending everything together with my beautiful Delian Tools contour brush and whatever contour powder I have left on it. Deciding to go with this fabulous liquid lipstick by the brand Colored Rain in the shade Sugar. It is just a beautiful, slightly cool toned, nudie sand color. I love it. It's absolutely beautiful. It's like cake, like a cake or something. Sugar, perfect name. I'm topping it off trying to do like kind of like outer lip shadow with this amazing lip liner from ColourPop called Pitch. But it kind of was like looking a little too ridiculous. I couldn't really blend it very well, so I just kind of put sugar back on top in another layer. This is the mark of a really excellent liquid lipstick, its ability to layer on itself once it's already dried. That is one of my factors that I look for in a good liquid lipstick, and the Colored Rain formula definitely fulfills that. Just cleaning up a little bit around the edges of my lips with some concealer and then some powder. And that is the finished look with a nude lip. I love this shade for a beautiful matte nude, but I was like, I'm gonna wear a red wig and I got this red blush on, so I better amp it up a little bit. I'm lining my lips with just some red lip liner. This is from NYX, I think it's in the shade Deep Red. And then I am just applying my favorite matte lip product in the world, the NARS Velvet Matte Lip Pencils. This is in the shade Cruella. This is still the sample that I got for my Sephora birthday gift from like a year and a half ago. <gasps> it's my favorite. The formula is fabulous. It feels like velvet. It is so soft and so matte and so beautiful. I am setting this mug with my Scandinavia Skin Finish just because I have it. And that is my finished face. I like this makeup look on its own, but with the wig, girl, check this out. Yes. Come on. Come on, look, even Ponce is here. Yes. Ugh, and those nails, though? Come on. Who are you? Boom! Nubian 2! So please go out and support this brand. I think it's a really great brand. If the, if the quality of the shadows is similar... In the other palettes to this one, I would highly recommend them. I think they're great investment. So are they the best eye qu the best quality eyeshadows I've ever used? No. Kat Von D is still my favorite. Are these amazing quality for the price point? Absolutely. Are they amazing quality for being an indie brand? Absolutely. I love indie brands that have pressed shadows instead of just loose shadows. They're just way easier to work with, in my personal opinion. And I, I just love the variety of this color assortment. It's really beautiful. I think it makes sense. I love it. If you're looking for a warm toned, like orangey gold palette, and you want something that's like, got a little bit more personality than like a Morphe 35O or like a Lorac Pro Unzipped Gold or whatever those things are, I think this is a really, really great uh, investment.
Boom! I'm Kimberly Clark. Thank you so much for watching. Please check out my other videos. Check out my series Listen Up. If you're watching my channel, you, I think, would benefit very much from hearing me articulate some of my general thoughts about consumerism. Anyway, uh, please check that out. And of course, my anti-haul videos, my holiday one. Hope you like this video, and please let me know if there are any other palettes that you would like me to check out and review, especially by Black-owned makeup brands. I'm super interested in supporting them, and I think you should too, even if you're a pasty white girl like me. I'm Kimberly Clark. Bye.